Fergal Sharkey, the, um, the satisfaction with the basic service is pretty good. Uh, I, I, I think actually I would take a completely converse view to that. What you're actually witnessing right now is decades of underinvestment and profiteering by water companies and the complete failure of regulation and mismanagement of it. We now have two layers to this conversation. Water companies have now spent almost six million hours dumping sewage into England's rivers over the last couple of years. And we now know we're facing water shortages. The companies were told about this. The regulators were told about it. The regulators didn't respond. And in the meantime, water companies have abstracted £72 billion worth of dividends out of those companies while saddling them with over £60 billion of debt. Mm. And just last year, just three water company executives got paid almost £10 million between the three of them. The truth is the failure of the regulators mm. has been tantrum out to a catastrophe and the environment and the shape of our rivers and our lakes and our chalk streams is now picking up the cost of that incompetence. It, it, you make a good point there because companies will do what they do and, and when you've got a monopoly you don't have any choice of provider then regulation the regulator becomes all important and ultimately that regulator reports to the government. Correct and I find it incredibly ironic <clears throat> that the individual with the most power and influence in all of this conversation, George Eustace, as the Secretary of State, has now been reduced to writing slightly pleading letters to national newspapers on Sunday morning asking the water companies to play nicely. The simple truth is George Eustace now needs to start acting and behaving like the Secretary of State and holding this industry and its regulators to account. And Fergal Sharkey, the thing about you know, tr trying to fix some of these shortcomings, building a reservoir, for example, takes years, getting planning permission. Um, some of these drainage systems are dating from the Victorian era. And to get the kind of um, effective system that you would require would take tens or maybe hundreds of billions of pounds. What is the best, best way to tackle well, I, something? Well, I, I, I can help you with that. And again, Mike is conveniently overlooking some of the realities of this. Our sewage system is as bad as Victorian as our roads are Roman. The simple truth is, off what has now clarified in public, water companies have a statutory obligation to build and operate and maintain sewage systems capable with effectively dealing with all of the effluent in those systems. Off what are now also arguing that the water companies have had all of the funding required over the last 30 years to meet that legal obligation. Clearly, they haven't been spending the money in infrastructure. We know they've reduced their spend by almost 40%, and that is leading to the catastrophe that we're now facing, both in terms of sewage and water supply. Mm. London is now number nine on a list of the 10 cities most likely to run out of water, along with the likes of Cape Town, Jakarta, Sao Paulo, Mexico City. So, Michael, conveniently, and it's part of the problem with the regulators, this almost sympathetic almost supportive approach to these companies. The money's in the system. The money was in the system. <clears throat> I remind everyone, water companies have paid out over £72 billion in dividends. Perhaps they should have spent more of that money on fixing their leaky infrastructure. Well, what's the answer? Nationalisation? No, I think the answer at this point in time, uh, George Eustace has the power this morning to issue what's called an enforcement order. That's a clear legal instruction to the companies to do exactly what he wants, when he wants it done by and how he wants it done. And any failure to comply with that instruction, he then has the power to fine them up to 10% of their annual turnover. And might I remind Michael, as a regulator, he has the power to take those directors to task under the Companies Act and hold each of them individually and collectively responsible mm. for the environmental devastation being caused by this industry. It's time for the regulators to act. Mike, why aren't you doing that? Well, I'm not a regulator. Mm. I'm a consumer body. I represent consumers. And mm. do you know what? We agree with Fergal. Consumers find the environmental performance of water companies mm. unacceptable. People want storm overflows mm. to be tackled. So the rivers are healthy habitats for wildlife. People want this. Now, the regulators currently have two investigations underway on an environmental compliance. So the Environment Agency have an investigation underway, and so do Offwatch. So there's two investigations simultaneously going on, which I think and uh, you know, will answer some of Fergal's questions, but I don't want to second-guess the outcome 
of that investigation. I don't think that is right at that point. But people value the environment and they do not want to see water companies behaving unsustainably in damaging the environment. We absolutely know this. Okay. Mike Keel and Fergal Sharkey, thanks very much indeed for that.